Hi, Gianni. Welcome. We are on list number five in your books. Those of you on the altar list, I'm going to be bringing that around right now. If you are on the altered list while we're reviewing and going over the new list, make sure you're reading over yours. You have some of the same vocabulary words. Study, quiz over them in your head. Don't waste time, okay? If you waste time... Not right now. Okay, everyone else on the regular list, let's go to list number five. Yes, sir, Shane. Is that from what you missed? I think everyone else already turned theirs in because you weren't here on Friday. Okay, last week we had a review list. This week we have a new list. I want you to look there. The very top there, the root we're looking at first is the root F-E-R, and it means what? It means to bear or to? carry to bear or to carry so anytime you see this root word or this root f-e-r in any of your words you know it means to bear or to carry okay so number one let's read this word together ready begin transfer make sure you're highlighting to every every week make sure you go through and highlight the bold because those are your vocabulary words so transfer is one of your vocabulary words this week it means to move up or carry from one place or person to another. Transfer, okay? Um, that was one of the questions that was on the Iowa test in the second grade. They didn't know what the word transfer meant, okay? It meant moving one thing to another spot or from one person to another person, okay? If, you have, if you've ever done like, um, there's a kind of art where you can kind of color or pencil in really um, hard and then it transfers you leave the ink onto the other sheet because of the way you're you're pushing on that ink on the other side of the paper and it transfers it to the other sheet so that's what the word transfer means number two what is this word class suffer, suffer. spell it with me ready s-u-f-f-e-r suffer suffer means to bear up under pain okay if you are suffering, you're bearing up under pain. Um, Jesus suffered greatly for us, didn't he? Number three, what is this word, class? Infer. Infer. Let's spell it. I-N-F-E-R. Infer. Infer means to arrive at a conclusion by reasoning. If you infer something, that means you've come to a conclusion and you've done it by reasoning back and forth. Okay? Um, I believe that you guys knew your spelling words last week. I came to that conclusion because I graded your spelling list and you did better. So I came to that conclusion. I came to that because I reasoned by looking at something, looking at some evidence. Number four, what is this word? Reference. Reference. Spell it with me. R-E-F-E-R-E-N-C-E. -E -E -E. Reference. A specific mention of. Okay? If I reference an author, that means I am making a specific uh, mention of that author. You can come put it on this pile, Gavin. Okay, number five. What is this word, class? Conifer. conifer. Spell it with me. C-O-N-I-F-E-R. Conifer. You notice this is bold. This is one of your vocabulary words, so highlight it. A conifer is a what? Cone-bearing tree. Okay. So how many of you have ever went and looked for pine cones? Okay, that is off a conifer tree. Okay, it is a cone bearing tree. I love Christmas time. I love Christmas trees. So this word conifer references that type of tree that would bear cones. Okay, number six. This is another vocabulary word, so highlight it. What is this word, class? How do we say it? Defer. Say it with me. Defer. Nice and loud. Defer. Defer means to what, Gavin? 
to submit to another's wishes. Let's say I want to go play basketball, but Shane wants to play football. I will defer to Shane's wishes, meaning it may not be what I want, but I'll go do what he wants to do. Okay, to submit to another's wishes. Make sure you highlighted that one. Number seven, what word is this, Adam? Uh, Referee. Say it with me, class. Referee. Um, Gianni, make sure you tell me if you can't hear me, okay? Referee. Referee is not a vocabulary word, but it is the one carrying the final authority in a game. Any of you boys that have played sports know that in sports you have a referee, someone who officiates a game, okay? Number eight. What is this word, class? Lucifer. Why is it capitalized? Josiah? Quickly. Why is it capitalized, Gavin? It's a name, okay? Lucifer means light-bearing, fallen rebel archangel, the devil. This is the name for Satan, okay? His real name was Lucifer. Of course, we know that God created all beings with a choice. He created us with a free will. And we know that Lucifer was an angel that God created. In fact, an angel of light. This is a common mistake that people make. They think of Satan as this scary looking, dark, evil creature with horns. And yet that's not at all what the Bible describes as uh, Satan. The Bible describes him as an angel of light. In fact, we come to the conclusion that he was one of the most beautiful angels that God created. In fact, he was so beautiful that he thought that he should be above God. And pride started welling up inside of his heart. And he made the choice to rebel. He made the choice to go against God, his creator. And so his name is Lucifer, meaning light-bearing, light-bearing. It's interesting. I just heard, um, we hear a lot of things in, in society, and I don't know. I haven't researched to find out how truthful this is, but I heard that there is a, a project going on, and it's called Luciferus. Okay, so it has the name Lucifer in it, and it's about a stamp that you would get on your hand. Of course, we know in the Bible talks about a mark of the beast in the end times, right? That you will get a mark in your hand that you will buy and sell with. No one can buy and sell unless they have this mark in their hand. Um, and as Christians, it talks about that being as the tribulation time. Us Christians will be gone during this time, which is a blessing. But they will be forcing everyone to get this mark on their hand, the mark of the beast or the mark of Satan in their hands. Well, I have heard that there is a project going on right now called Luciferus where they would put a mark on your hand. Now, this project doesn't talk about buying or selling with this mark, but it would be it would have all your health records on it. And it's um it's they're saying that it would they are calling it Luciferus because it would be kind of like you guys ever gone to a fair and you've gotten one of those stamps and it kind of fades away, you can't see it unless they shine a certain light on it. Well, it's basically the same kind of idea. It's like a tattoo that you can't see until a certain specific light is shined on it. I just thought that was interesting that they're talking about this mark that would go on your hand and it's called Luciferus. And it's called that because it takes light to shine this. So I just, once again, I don't know how accurate that is, but this is something that I've heard is, is coming around and I don't know if it was made up or not. But the interesting thing was that, that word choice that they chose, Luciferus. Lucifer meaning the angel of light or light bearing, okay? Um, and number nine, what is this word, guys? Fertile. Fertile, bearing fruit in great quantities. Go ahead and highlight that. Um, Israel is a very fertile place. In fact, that's why so many battles, there is constantly contention in the Middle East. Everyone wants, Israel is not a large country. In fact, we traveled the whole like country of Israel within just a few hours, um, really, when we were there. It's a small, small land. But everybody wants Israel because Israel is very fertile. That's why there's so many battles there. They all want to conquer that land. So fertile, it means bearing fruit in great quantities. Um, we have many fertile areas here in California where the farmers can plant and grow their crops. Number 10, monotone. Say that with me. Monotone. Have you ever heard somebody who talks like this? They are very monotone. Their voice does not fluctuate. Okay, um, monotone meaning having one pitch, okay? 
Um, when you are a teacher or you're a speech giver, you don't want to be monotone. You want to you want to vary your pitch. You want to be interesting because it's really hard to listen to someone who talks like this all the time and they never change their pitch. It's always one tone. So that is what the word monotone means, okay? You'll notice the prefix here it talks about the Greek prefixes mon and mono mean one, okay? So monotone means one tone. Number 11, this is one of your vocabulary words, highlight it. Monogram, say it with me. Monogram. A monogram is a single design made up of a person's initials, okay? One design made up of a person's initials, okay? Have you guys ever seen something engraved? Um, could be on, I know when I got married, we had a cake server that we would serve our wedding cake. And on that wedding cake, it was a silver one. It had initials that looked like this. Something like that, okay? And that was our monogram. It stood for Brittany and Jesse Rule, okay? So it's one design made up of someone's initials. That's called a monogram. Number 12, what is this word, guys? Okay, we pronounce this one, good try. We pronounce this one monotony. Say it with me. Monotony. A mono monotony means a lack of variety or sameness. Okay, a lack of variety or sameness. That's a monotony. If you get yourself in a monotonous routine where you do the same thing every day, you don't change anything up, that's monotony. Okay, number 13, what is this word? Monologue, meaning a speech performance by one person. When you get into junior high, if you sign up for the fine arts program, you can sign up to be, do speeches. You will memorize speeches and you can get up and you can deliver them and try to win prizes for the delivery of your speeches. And one of those is a monologue, meaning one person. Um, there's another type of speech called duet acting, meaning it's a speech that happens between two people. But a monologue is a speaking performance given by, given by one person. And then number 14, we've probably played this game many times. What is this word? Monopoly. Monopoly. Why is the game called Monopoly? Well, it comes from this word and the root of this word, the control of many businesses by one company. Okay? Um, it's interesting. If you actually research cert certain companies, you would find out that so many of these companies are owned by other companies. Okay? Um, you'll hear all the time, like Sprint's buying out Verizon and Verizon's buying out whatever. Okay? It's a monotony. When one person owns a bunch of different businesses, that's called a monopoly. That's why when you play the game, what's the whole game, the purpose of monopoly? You want to do what? You want to buy all of the properties, right? You want to own them. The more you own, the better chance you will win. That's a monopoly. Okay? And number 15, what is this word? Monarchy. You probably heard this word before. A nation governed by a king or a queen. Are we a monarchy here in the United States? Yes or no? No. We do not have a king or a queen. We are ruled by the people. And I know it doesn't sound seem like that sometimes. Sometimes when you're growing up, you think the president makes all the rules, right? Because he's the president. But the president doesn't make any of the laws. Um, it's the people. We make the laws. And we don't make them, but we, we elect people that rule over us. And they come to us and they bring a law and they say, hey, I've written this law. I think it will help us. And then voters, you have a chance. You have a chance to vote it in or to vote it down. Now, what happens a lot of times is we don't go out and vote. So then we have these lawmakers making laws and we feel like, oh, we, don't, we, don't even, we didn't even know that existed. This is we're not doing our job. We're not researching and going out and voting. We've been given that freedom here. Use it. Every single person who's old enough to vote should vote this year for all of those local elections and our, and our national election, um, we should vote because we do not have a monarchy. We are not ruled by one person. One person doesn't make all the laws. We the people decide those laws. Um, what is a nation that you can think of that is a monarchy? England, yeah. Um, queen Elizabeth has been queen for a very, very long time it seems, but um, they are ruled and reigned over by a queen in England. She makes the laws what she says goes. 
Okay, number 16. This word is what? Visible. Once again, this is when you want to highlight. Visible means able to be seen. You'll notice the Latin suffixes here. Able, A-B-L-E, and Ible. I-B-L-E mean able to be. They are used as adjectives. Okay? So anytime you see able or Ible means they are able to be. So visible, vis, means your eyesight, vision. So able to be seen. Accessible, say that word with me, number 17. Accessible means able to be reached or gotten to. Accessible. If Gavin, if I said, oh, Gavin is accessible right now, that means, hey, you can go talk to him. He's able to be reached. He's able to be spoken to. Accessible. Number 18, what is this word, guys? Audible means able to be heard, okay? Audible means your ear, your hearing, okay? If you hear someone has auditory issues, that means they have hearing issues. Audible means you're able to be heard. Make sure we're facing forward, Landon, and not distracting anyone. Put your stuff on your desk, please. Tuck your chair all the way in, face forward. Audible, okay, uh, number 19, corruptible. Say that with me. Corruptible. corruptible means able to be ruined or spoiled. Corruptible. The Bible tells us not to invest in corruptible things on earth. Do you guys know that everything here on earth is eventually going to rot? It's going to decay. It's going to break down. Think about these buildings. If we never did anything to these buildings, we never cleaned them, we never did any maintenance on them, what would happen to this building, Josiah? It would just eventually collapse, right? It might take 10 years, it might take 20 years, it might take 50 years, but it's not going to stay brand new, shiny, clean forever without someone maintaining it, okay? That's how everything is on this earth. Our bodies, do you guys realize our, after we're born, our bodies begin the dying process? We are decaying. We're getting older every single day, okay? So we are corruptible, but there's something that's non-corruptible, not stuff that we can lay up in heaven. God says, lay up treasures for yourselves in heaven. How do we do that? We tell people about Jesus because their soul can live on for eternity. We do things for God because that's going to last for eternity. So um, think about that word corruptible when you're thinking about that. Everything on earth is corruptible, but there's some things that are incorruptible. Those things that are in heaven and are heavenly. Number 20, what is this word, guys? Say it nice and loud. Thank you, Liviana. Able to be trusted or what? Reliable. Reliable. Thank you, Adam. Able to be trusted or reliable. If I said... Uh, Olive is very responsible. That means I can trust her. She's reliable. If I tell her to do something, I don't have to ask her twice. I know she's going to get the job done the first time. You know how you can get promoted at your work when you guys get older? Be responsible. If the boss says, hey, I, I noticed that the bathroom trash is overflowing. It's not your job. But what do you think you should do? Go take it out. And then the boss goes in there. Whoa, what happened? The trash. The trash was, oh, I heard that Tristan took it out. Oh, I mentioned that to him, but it's not his job. Man, Tristan's so reliable and so responsible. He does the things that I don't even expect him to do. He goes above and beyond. He is responsible. He gets the job done. He doesn't have to be asked twice. Okay? Be responsible at home. Do your parents have to ask you twice to clean your room? Um, be responsible. Able to be trusted. Reliable. Next one, number 21. What is this word, guys? digestible there are certain things that are not digestible you should not eat rubber from your parents tire okay it is not digestible digestible means able to be taken into the body's system okay um, food you want to eat food that is easily digestible number 22 what is this word sensible, sensible. what does sensible mean Able to be to use good judgment. Thank you, Adam. Able to use good judgment. Sensible. Okay. Um, making the right decisions. If I say, oh yeah, Adam's a very sensible guy. That means he uses good judgment. When he has a chance to, to choose, he chooses the right way. He uses his judgment in a in a responsible manner. Okay, he's sensible. Number 23, what is this word? Possible. Possible. Able to exist. 
occur, be done. Okay, possible means it can be done. It exists, it can occur. Number 24, what is this word? Convertible. Convertible, highlight this one, this one's a vocabulary word. Convertible means able to be what? What is one thing that you think of when you think of the word convertible? Josiah? A car, right? Have you guys ever ridden in a convertible car? It's able to be converted, meaning it changed from one look to another look. It has a top down and then it has a top up. I think of a convertible car. But there are other things that are convertible, okay? Uh, you might be able to change, I'm trying to think of something that's convertible. You got an, you got an example, Adam, for me? Good, very good. So some of you might have those jackets that are like a rain jacket on the outside and they have like the fleece on the inside and you can flip them inside out, wear them both ways. Those are convertible. That's a good example. I like that. I think about those little toys that used to turn in like, like into a transformer. Do you guys remember those when you were little? They were like changed from like a car to like a, a guy. They were convertible. They could be changed into something else. All right, number 25. This is also a vocabulary word. What is this word, guys? Credible, meaning can be believed. If Josiah comes and tells me a story, I may say, well, that's credible. He might say, I saw Tony chewing on his socks out at recess. Oh, yeah, that's credible. I could see Tony chewing on his socks. No, I'm just kidding, Tony. Um, no, but he might tell me I saw a squirrel up in a tree. Well, that's a credible story. If he tells me that he saw a Power Ranger up in a tree, <laughs> that might not be as credible of a story. I might not believe that one. Credible. Can be believed. Number 26. What is this word? Terrible. terrible meaning able to cause terror. Awful. Horrible. We know what the ter terrible means. Number 27. Highlight this word. This word is? Edible. Edible, edible means? Can Have you guys ever gotten an edible arrangement delivered to your house? Have you guys ever seen them um, being advertised? They look like big bouquets of flowers. But they're not flowers. Does anyone know what they are? Has anyone ever seen them? Edible arrangements? What are they? They're like fruit, right? They like do like little melon balls and make them look like flowers. And they do this big arrangement. It looks like a flower arrangement, but it's all like fruit. So when you think of edible, think about that. Edible arrangement. Something that can be eaten. Okay. Um, number 28 is the word considerable. Considerable means notable, important in size or worth. If I said they did a considerable amount of fundraising, I mean, that means they did a notable amount. They did a good amount of it. It was important in size or worth. It was considerable. Number 29, this is a vocabulary word, so highlight it. Josiah, do you have a question? Huh? Oh, it's an old cartoon. I don't know. Don't worry about it. Okay. We are on number 29. What is this word, class? Durable. Durable. Durable means? Lasting, not easily broken. Lasting, not easily broken. Okay? Something that is durable is usually made out of a good material. Okay? If I was going to put up a um, patio cover in my backyard... I would want to use a durable material. I probably would want to use something that is waterproof. It would be long lasting. I don't want to use something that once it get wet, gets wet, it just kind of falls apart, right? I wouldn't use cardboard as a patio cover. That would not be durable. Durable means lasting, not easily broken. Number 30, highlight this one as well. Liviana, what is this word? Capable, capable meaning having the ability or skillful. Liviana was capable of reading that word capable. That means she had the ability to. She was skillful in it. Tristan is capable of throwing a good football. He has a good arm. He's skillful in that. Okay, capable means you have the ability. Number 31, what is this word, class? Manageable. Manageable means easy to guide or control, cooperative. Okay, uh, the third grade class a few minutes ago, they were a very manageable class, meaning easy to guide or control. I didn't have to raise my voice. I didn't have to get them into into obedience they just sat and they did what they were supposed to do they were easy to control they were cooperative they were manageable number 32 what is this word class portable, portable. portable. very good adam portable means what adam able to be moved from one place to no from place to place 
How many of you boys have a portable basketball hoop at your house? All right, we have one out in our yard. It just means you can move it. It's not cemented into the ground. Those basketball hoops out there are portable basketball hoops. They can be moved from one place to the next, okay? You can transfer them. You can move them. Portable. And then number 33, remarkable. Remarkable means unusually or unusual or extraordinary. If I said, wow, that was a remarkable story, that means it was unusual. It was extraordinary. Number 34, what is this word, class? Make sure this one's highlighted. Trustworthy, able to be counted on. This one is very similar to that responsible. Reliable, meaning trustworthy, able to be counted on. Once again, if I said Ariel is trustworthy, she's able to be counted on, she is reliable. I know she's going to be here. I know she's going to be on time. I know she's going to get the job done. She is reliable. And number 35, class, what is this word? Noticeable, Noticeable meaning likely to attract attention. Likely to attract attention. Okay, if something is noticeable, it catches your attention. Um, if I came in here and I markered up on this board and did a huge American flag, you would walk in and your eyes would go right to that American flag painted on the board, right? It would be noticeable. It would attract your attention, okay? This is your list for this week. Make sure we're studying it. We are one day short this week because we didn't have Monday. So that means you're going to have to study a little extra hard this week because we're still having our test on Friday. We're still going to have our pre-test tomorrow. So, that means you're going to have to work a little bit harder because you're one day short. But that's okay. Remember, pre-test doesn't count. It's just an extra practice for us. Let's do this. I want you guys to go ahead and stand. We're going to go through here, and I want you guys to see that every word is broken down into syllables. Does anyone know what a syllable is? If you're in this group, go ahead and stand, please. If you're in this group, go ahead and stand. Thank you very much. Every word is broken down into a syllable. Does anyone know what a syllable is? Shane? Okay, so you kind of said in reverse, yes, but it's a part of a word, okay? Every word is made up of parts to that word, syllables. And when we're counting out those syllables, we're going to clap it out. So I'll show you, for example, transfer. Count that out with me, ready? Transfer. Say it again. Transfer. How many syllables are in this word? Two. Two. This is going to help you in learning how to spell if you can learn to break apart these words by syllables, okay? I'm learning trans and then fur and I'm putting them in my head that way okay here we go we're gonna do that with all of the words so you need to be standing but you also need to be looking down we're gonna count out all these words we already transfer number two suffer ready suffer okay number three infer number four reference do that one again reference okay next one ready begin conifer do it again conifer number six Defer. Number seven, referee. Number eight, Lucifer. Number nine, fertile. Number ten, monotone. Number eleven, monogram. Number twelve, monotony. Do that one again. Monotony. That one has four syllables. We break it down in our heads. Number thirteen, Monologue. Number 14, Monopoly. Number 15, Monarchy. Number 16, Visible. Number 17, Accessible. Do that one again. Accessible. Number 18, Audible. Number 19, Corruptible. Number 20, responsible number 21 digestible make sure you're saying them or it's not helping you number 22 sensible number 23 possible number 24 convertible number 25 credible number 26 terrible number 27 edible number 28 considerable do that one again considerable okay number 29 durable 
Number 30. Capable. Number 31. Manageable. Number 32. Portable. Number 33. Remarkable. Number 34. Reliable. And number 35. Noticeable. You may be seated. Another way to work on these words, guys, is to break them apart. T R A N S F E R. It gets it into your head how many letters are in that word. If you break down those syllables, you say, Mrs. Rule, why did we learn syllables in language? It's to help you with your spelling. We break apart these words. Do you remember the words are made up of roots and suffixes and prefixes? We put them together and we have this word. So if we can learn to break it apart, we can help. That helps us with our spelling. Okay, let's look over to page 11, test your understanding. Those of you that are in the second um, group, I want you to also open up to page 11. You're gonna do the test your understanding with us. So go ahead and open those up. Landon, are you asleep? Number, page 11, everyone. Test your understanding. It says write the missing vocabulary words on notebook paper. We're just gonna write them in our books. Number one, read me the sentence, Adam. Drivers were warned to stay off the roads, which the pelting rain made barely what? What vocabulary word would fit in that blank there? Drivers were warned to stay off the roads, which the pelting rain made barely. Why would they be told to stay off the roads? And think of pelting rain, that means like sheets of rain coming down. Gavin, that's a good thought, but there's a different idea they're getting at here. Yes, ma'am. Visible. Visible. Very good, Olive. Visible. Remember when the rain just comes down so hard like that? It's just pelting. Lana and I asked everyone to have their spelling books out. We're doing it all together. Even those of you that are in the different group, we're doing page 11. So you're going to write that in the side. Make sure you write it somewhere visible. The sheets of rain just coming down, it makes it hard to see. I've been in storms like this, especially in the Midwest, where it's just you have to pull over because the rain is coming down so hard you can't see the car in front of you. Number two, Amy was not excused because her reason for not doing her homework was hardly what? What do you think, Ariel? What would you say? Credible, good. She made up an excuse that was not credible, meaning not believable. Maybe she said her dog ate her homework. I don't know. But it was not credible. Number three, this sales lady said that there would be a $5 charge for putting the blank on Ryan's sweater. Hmm. The sales lady said that there would be a $5 charge for putting the blank on Ryan's sweater. What do you think it is, Adam? No, but that's a good thought. There are iron-on transfers, so I know where you're going with that one. Yes. Monogram. monogram. Yeah. She wanted the initials. Sometimes people put their monograms on sweaters or bags or things like that. You'll notice on the fundraiser right now, there's things that they can add their monograms to. Number four, the climber realized how blank his watch was when it was still working after falling on the rocks. Shane? Uh, Not capable. Olive? Accessible. Not accessible. I get what you're going with that on that one. The key here is it was still working after falling on the rocks. Josiah? Durable. durable. The climber realized how durable his watch was when it was still working after falling on the rocks. Number five. Chris had to blank to another bus in order to get home on Friday. Yes, sir. Transfer. Transfer. He had to move from one to another. Transfer. Number six. In a country that has an absolute blank, the people do not elect their leaders. Liviana? Monarchy. Number seven, God can trust you for larger tasks.
if you are blank in performing your day-by-day -day task. Ariel, what do you think? Reliable. reliable, very good. God can trust you for larger tasks if you are reliable in performing your day-to-day -day tasks. Same thing with your bosses, guys. When you get hired on for a job, if you can do the little things, like I gave the example of Tristan taking out the trash, and you're reliable and you do it all the time, the boss is going to give you more responsibility, which means more pay, usually. So take pride in doing the little things and being reliable with it. You can start that now by doing your homework on time, every time, doing it well, doing everything you know you're supposed to be doing. Uh, number eight, he was such a blank artist that his work was chosen for display in City Hall. He was such a blank artist that his work was chosen for display in City Hall. Tony, what do you think it is? Well, they wouldn't have displayed it in City Hall probably if it was that bad. Adam, what do you think? Capable, good. Capable. He was such a capable artist. Number nine, Samuel the prophet heard God speak to him in a blank voice. Cameron? Just what? Say it. I think you got it. Uh, audible. audible. Yes. Able to be heard. Very good. And an audible voice. Number 10. My older brother owns a blank laptop computer which he takes back and forth to college with him. He takes it back and forth. Oh. Tony? The key is he takes it back and forth. Liviana? Portable. Portable. Portable means able to be moved from one place to another. Number 11. The blank in our backyard dropped enough pine cones for mom, hopefully you're writing these in, for mom to make a Christmas wreath. Shane? The conifer. The conifer. The tree? The bear's cones. Number 12, so that there is no waste on space flights, scientists have invented blank food containers. It's interesting. So that there is no waste on space flights, scientists have invented blank food containers. Adam? Edible? Yeah, edible. They store their food, and then they eat the containers that store their food. They are edible food containers. Wouldn't that be funny? Warm up your soup in your bowl. You eat your soup and then you eat the bowl. Number 13. Children should blank to their parents' wishes. Josiah? Um, defer. defer. Very good. Number 14. My uncle's car was a class convertible. convertible. That top could be detached in warm weather. And number 15, rich blank soil yields abundant crops. What is it, class? Fertile. Fertile. Very good. Okay, be ready for your pretest tomorrow. You know what? Let me take a look here. We'll switch. We'll do the pretest Thursday. How's that sound? I'll give you an extra day. So we'll switch and just do a game tomorrow and study. Be ready for your pretest Thursday. I'll give you an extra day there to, to study. Okay, go ahead and pull out your creative writing books. Those of you that are in the extra list, I'm just going to read through these words with you. So go ahead and pull your list out while everyone else is getting their creative writing books out. And let's read through these one time here. Let's read through them together. Say, we'll all say number one and we'll read it together. Ready? Begin. Culture. Say it nice and loud. Culture. Number two. Curious. Say it with me. Curious. It was a curious as a cat. Number three. Dangerous. Number four. 
decision. Number five. Demonstrate. Demonstrate. Say it again. Demonstrate. demonstrate. I want to demonstrate a magic trick for you. Number six. What is this word? Denominator. Have you learned this in math yet? Denominator. It's part of a math fact. It's part of your division facts. Number seven. Department. I worked at the department store. Number eight. Departure, meaning to leave. Number nine. Depth. depth. You have width. You have depth, meaning how deep something is. And number ten. Descendant. Descendant. Someone who descends from another person. Your vocabulary words are off of the regular list. Edible, meaning can be eaten. Visible, able to be seen. Credible, can be believed. Audible, able to be heard, and capable, having ability, and skillful. All right, page number 50 and 51 is where we are in our creative writing today. Now, we have been learning about how to go from learning our grammar, which we're going to get back into grammar. Right now, the sixth grade language is um, kind of structured in the way that we take a break from grammar, and we focus on writing for a little while, and then we jump back into grammar, okay? So the basics here that I want you guys to get, okay, we can't write unless we can write a correct sentence. We've talked about that before we started into our creative writing. We talked about a sentence. A sentence is a group of words that expresses a what, class? Complete thought, okay? It has to make sense. Tristan, the smart kid in the sixth grade, does that make sense? No, I didn't finish it. Tristan, the smart kid in the sixth grade, got 100% on his spelling test. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So I had to complete the thought. A sentence is a group of words that expresses a complete thought. Landon, the baseball player. Does that make sense? No. I have the who, but I don't know what. What did he do? Landon, the baseball player, hit a home run and knocked it out of the park. Now it makes sense. I have a complete thought. Okay, if I said, received a 100% on our spelling test, exclamation point, complete thought, yes or no? No, I'm missing the who. Who or what received 100% on our spelling test? And I know those are easy examples, but we're getting caught up sometimes and we're writing sentences, sixth grade, still in our creative writing that aren't complete thoughts. So I really want you to focus, Gavin, up, eyes up here. I really want you to focus on making sure whenever you write a sentence that is complete, entirely complete, it makes sense, wherever your capital letter is and wherever your end mark is, from there to there, does that make sense? Now obviously I don't have anything there, but you're going to look from my capital letter to my end mark. Now sometimes when we're doing paragraphs, we have another word right here and we move on. You cannot say does that make sense by reading the whole paragraph, okay? Because in your mind, you can make it make sense by reading on the next part, okay? So you have to look at just where your capital letter and your end mark is and check. Did I write complete sentences? When you write a paragraph, you need to have three to four complete sentences. But you need to look at each sentence by itself. Can it stand alone? Does it make sense by itself? If I did not have the other three sentences in the paragraph, does this sentence make sense? If it does, you have a complete sentence. If it doesn't, then you probably have a fragment. Remember, a fragment is just a part of a sentence. The most common mistake that I am seeing you guys do on your writing are run-on sentences or run-together sentences where you write and then you have a comma and you write some more. Or you write and you have a conjunction and you write some more. Or you write and you just have a comma and you keep going. Okay? Remember that sentences, two sentences, have to be joined. Which two ways? With a what? Comma and a conjunction or semicolon. If they are not joined one of those two ways, you do not have a correct compound sentence. You have a run on or a run together and that's incorrect. So I really want you guys to focus on complete accurate sentences, okay? 
We talked about re writing creatively. We talked about using awareness. I've been using this with my son a lot. He ran, <laughs> the one I told you that ran into a bike or a parked car, he ran into the wall the other day and scraped it. And he's like, Mom, I scraped my arm. I'm like, you ran into the wall. It didn't move. The wall didn't move. It was right there. It's been there for 20 years probably. You have to be aware of your surroundings. And that's how we start developing our writing abilities. We're aware of our surroundings. If I'm going to write an interesting story, I've got to have all the details, right? If I'm going to write about the great homecoming football game, then when I go to that great homecoming football game, I'm going to be watching. Is it dark? Are the football lights on in the stadium? Are the cheerleaders loud and cheering? Are they happy? Can I smell popcorn in the stands? Can I smell hot dogs? Is everyone cheering? Is the team winning and they're excited or are they down and losing? I'm going to pay attention to all those details so that when I write, I can write all of those details and get it interesting and, and grab my reader's attention and really make it something that they want to read. So I'm going to be aware. I'm going to um, look at the details. Okay. I'm going to um, be creative. Today, on the top there, they give you a little mind stretcher, okay? Making anagrams. How many of you have ever heard of an anagram? Has anyone ever heard of an anagram? Okay, we're learning a new term then. An anagram is when you take a word, like, let me give you an example here. Um, I had a few in my mind, but I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and pull them back up here. Okay. For example, an anagram is when you take a word and you create another word using those same letters, okay? For example, the word fried. If I said, Ariel, make an anagram of this, she's going to take these letters and using these same letters, she's going to try to come up with another word. Can you come up with another word using these letters? Fired. Fired. Very good. She used the exact same letters. All she really did was switch the, the R and the I there. So we have fried and fired. So that's an anagram. So it really is just kind of a fun way to stretch your brain. Let's see if anyone can do one for this word. All the letters, by the way. Adam? You raised your hand, you know? Written? Hmm? Written? Written? No? Gavin? Uh, try to use just these letters. This one is a little bit challenging, maybe. Whoa. Landon? No. Tony? Slightened? No. Five tickets to whoever can figure it out. Cameron? No. I'll give you a hint. Starts with an S. Starts with an S. Ariel? Silence. Very good. Okay. Do you guys have um, dry erase boards? Okay. Go ahead and grab your dry erase boards. And your dry erase markers. Quickly, guys. Quickly, quickly.
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You can come borrow one. Make sure you get them back to me. Yes. Okay. I'm going to give you a new word. Let's see if you can come up with an anagram for the new word. This one will also be for five tickets. So whoever can write it on their board first. Yes, ma'am. Liviana? Okay. If you don't have markers, make sure you tell your mom and dad you need markers. Yes? You want to? Let's see if I have a marker left. Y'all stole my markers. Um, Shane, I'm going to borrow that one back. Let him borrow that one. Oh, thank you. I got one, though. That one's who's? Okay. Do you have one to use? Okay, here's the word, guys. I'm going to give you an easier one. But it's the first one who can figure it out. Heart. Go. Heart. There is a word, an anagram. Give me an anagram for heart. I'm not going to tell you. You have to use all the letters. Yes, sir. Oh, um, I asked... I asked, can you let him borrow one? Yes. I got it. Ooh, Gavin got it first. It's a first. First. E R. I got it first. Actually, Gavin got it first. Okay. Gavin, five tickets for you. I'll give them to you in a minute. Next one. This is an easy one as well. Go. Okay, there, there are several. Shane, I'm going to give it to you. What does that say? Tarp. I actually didn't even think of that one. I was thinking of trap. But both of those are anagrams, so good job. Okay, here's the next one. Shane got those five. Okay, here we go. The word is race. Go. Josiah. Care. Good job. Me, go. Ooh, I got it. Neek? Nope. Too far. It is not neek. <laughs> I don't even know if that's a word. What do you have? K E N E? No. Keen is a word, too. Keen is a word, but that's not how you spell it. Penny! What did it start with? Keen. Shane got it. Penny. Okay. What is that? I'm going to split that. I'll give two tickets to Shane and two to Gavin because you both had it. You just had it spelled incorrectly. Okay, last one, and this one will be, this one will be harder. This one will be for 10. Oh, I need that. Oh, I have 
Ooh. Last one for 10 tickets. I got it. Rotate. Nope. So you got to use all the same. Nope. Got to use these letters. Got to use these letters. I'll give you a hint. So it goes to Liviana. Good job. So class, let's remember, what are these called? What are these called? Anagrams. Okay, eyes on me. Here's your assignment. Shh, hold on to the markers in just a minute. Here's your assignment on page 50. It says, let's try writing a descriptive paragraph again. This time, think about your friends. Let your mind work. Think about the qualities of a good friend. Think about who your friends are. Think about what you and your friends do. Think about someone who feels lonely because his friend is away. Think of a lot of different things. Make a list of ideas that has come to you. Then in your journal, uh oh, we don't, sh we don't talk out loud. In your journal, or on a piece of paper, remember I'm collecting the journal pieces and I'm keeping them in a binder, you are going to write this paragraph. So on this little section right here, just size it correctly in class, please, you are going to write some ideas. So maybe you're writing some descriptions of our friend. Kind, funny, um, likes to go shopping with me, likes to play basketball with me. You're just writing some ideas about your friend. And then you're gonna take those ideas, remember, and now you're going to form your paragraph. You're gonna write it on a separate sheet of paper. Do you guys remember how I explained to you how to write your paragraphs on paper? Yeah. Name, date, date. how, what are we gonna do with our spacing? Oh, We're gonna indent the first line of the paragraph. Good job, Cameron. And then what are we gonna do? Every other line. I need I need a paragraph, so I need four sentences. Cannot speak out loud without permission. I need four sentences. Guys, how many sentences do I want in this paragraph? Four. That's all I need. Four sentences about friendship, about your friend. You're going to write it in cursive. It's going to go in our class journal, so do your best. That is your homework tonight as well as your spelling worksheet. I'm going to hand on your spelling worksheets right now. If you have a marker of mine, you may come quickly and turn them in. Shane, at lunchtime, you're going to take the spelling test in Gavin, okay? Put them on the desk, please. I'm going to put those spelling worksheets. Don't throw them. Set them. That's something I shouldn't have to say. Viviana, can you do me a favor, please? Can you pass these out to everyone in, in the regular group and then bring me the extras? Please. Set the other ones down out. Gianni, I will 